Welcome to the Recaps channel. In today's video, we'll recap Anon. Let's get started. Detective Sal Friedland walks through the city, observing profiles of strangers he passes. He sees every detail about his surrounding, including advertisements. However, one woman is labeled as unknown, which makes him curious. Sal arrives at the police station and interviews an insurance broker whose son is missing. Using their technology, he quickly finds the last recording of the son before his fatal fall from a building. Later, Sal interrogates a socialite who accuses her maid of stealing her diamond bracelet, but upon reviewing the maid's visual recording, it becomes clear that the bracelet was already missing when she cleaned the bathroom. In another case, a lawyer defends his client who shot a man in an alley, claiming self-defense. Sal examines both the defendant's and the victim's recordings and discovers that the client pulled out a gun before the victim made any move. Sal is then called to a crime scene with Detective Charles Gaddis, where a man named James Cray has been shot in his apartment. Sal watches as James returns home and reads a book, only to have his vision switched to the killer's perspective. Charles reveals a similar case from July where the victim also witnessed their killer's point of view. The previous case hinted at a woman being the last person to see the victim, but there are no records of her. Sal remembers seeing the woman who was labeled as unknown. Later that evening, Sal attempts to access the recording of the unknown woman but finds that it has been deleted. The next day, Sal reviews James's final recording and discovers that it has been edited. Lester, the technology contractor, informs them that James was recently cleared of insider trading charges. They also hear a faint doorbell ringing in the background, masked by music, leading them to suspect that James hired a hacker to clear his charges. They uncover that Jordan Meese, the victim of a previous case, also had edited recordings to hide his addiction relapse. Sal reveals that the unknown woman he encountered, who matches the description of Nee's last visitor, was deleted from his recording, suggesting that someone hacked and deleted it. That evening, Sal calls his ex-wife, Kristen, to mournfully remind her that their son's birthday would have been the next day. Kristen advises him to move on. Later, Sal is called to a new crime scene where two women were shot after their visions were hijacked. The victim's housekeeper informs Sal that the women had a female visitor with brown hair. Suddenly, they hear a noise from inside the house. Sal and the officer draw their guns to investigate but the officer is shot immediately. Sal follows the suspect into a nearby subway and during the chase, his view of the stairs is altered, causing him to fall. Sal gets up and checks the subway train. It turns out that the train he was observing was an illusion. The following day, the team reviews the victim's last moments, and Charles identifies one of them as the daughter of a prominent Christian senator running for re-election. Based on the victim's experiences, they conclude the suspect erases crimes that are considered victimless. In order to catch the hacker, Sal proposes hiring her services. Sal adopts an undercover role as a stockbroker with a new identity, committing to the act for a month to gather enough recordings to overwrite his true identity. Once he has sufficient material, he hires a high-class escort. After their encounter, he posts on the same bulletin boards used by the other victims, claiming the need to erase the evening to keep it secret from his fiancée. One day, a hacker named Anon contacts Sal and insists on meeting at a public place that evening. Before leaving his apartment, Sal discreetly signals Lester. Finally, Sal meets Anon and brings her to his apartment so that Lester can locate her, but her location is blocked. Anon informs Sal that she only sees what he needs her to hack, but warns him that she is capable of doing more if he betrays her. Once the job is complete, Anon proceeds to delete their meeting. To buy Lester more time for tracing, Sal engages in small talk with Anon. As she prepares to leave, Sal casually asks her what she does with people's memories, which she cannot erase. In response, Anon points a gun at him and demands that he look away while she exits the apartment. As soon as she is gone, Sal grabs his gun and attempts to chase after her, but she has vanished. Lester still couldn't find any record of Anon. Their new tech specialist, Cyrus Freer, can't access Anon's past recordings as well. They observe Anon in her apartment. Later, they see Anon deleting a recording of an art dealer named Jesper Nix purchasing forged paintings from the database. Cyrus traces 12 proxies used by Anon, with the last one being anonymous. The next day, Sal meets with the team, but they still haven't located her. They later learn that Nix has been killed in a similar manner. Bureau Commissioner Joseph Kennick emphasizes that Anon's ability to alter crimes compromises their transparent system, making all crimes possible. Charles instructs Sal to go back undercover to capture Anon, which makes Sal nervous about arousing suspicion. 
He asks Cyrus and Lester to patch his recent memories. Days later, Sal contacts Anon, allowing Lester to trace her new proxy. Anon alters a recording of Sal purchasing drugs, questioning his motive for wanting to meet her again. Sal questions Anon about her motives and she admits to believing the system is flawed. Suddenly, Anon points a gun at Sal, questioning his sincerity about having a fiancé when he acts like a bachelor. Sal pushes away the gun, and Anon leans in for a kiss. They spend the night together. After their passionate encounter, Anon examines Sal's recordings and discovers a glitch that reveals his true identity. Sal hears her leaving and finds Lester dead in the adjacent apartment. Anon calls him, disclosing what she has learned and warns him not to search for her. Charles advises him to take a few days off to recover. At home, Sal receives a message from Anon, telling him that she can now see everything through his eyes. Sal threatens to stop her, and in response, Anon sends him multiple illusions of being attacked. His vision shifts to his son's last moments. The next morning, Anon erases Sal's recordings of his son from his mind. He contacts his ex-wife, Kristen, and asks her to share any recordings she has of their son since all of his are gone. Kristen realizes that her recordings of him are also missing. As Sal leaves his apartment, he finds the hallway engulfed in flames. Feeling paranoid, he pulls out his gun until his neighbor, Thomas, catches his attention. Sal drives to the police station, and Charles discovers him. Sal explains that Anon has manipulated his eyes, and he no longer trusts his own perception. Suddenly, another detective approaches and arrests Sal for Thomas's murder. In the interrogation room, the detectives argue that one of his bullets was found near the body, but Sal points out that his 9mm gun couldn't have caused the large bullet hole they observe on Thomas's body. He insists that Anon is framing him, but his words fail to convince anyone. Sal is placed under house arrest and removed from the case. Throughout his house arrest, Sal is constantly monitored by the team. He casually gazes at a wall while discreetly placing a gun on his belt from behind, avoiding detection. Sal pretends to be asleep before getting up and navigating his way out of the building with closed eyes. He incapacitates the officer keeping an eye on him and proceeds to Anon's loft. Sal reaches the loft and demands an explanation, but Anon claims that she is also being framed. To prove her innocence, she sends him a recording of when she left his fake apartment, revealing that Lester was already dead before she departed. Sal informs Charles that Anon may be innocent, but Charles suspects it's a ploy. Sal is relieved of his duties and placed under surveillance. Outside his apartment, Anon observes his situation. She hacks into his recordings and loops a clip of him in his apartment for the detectives monitoring him. Additionally, she fabricates a false emergency report, causing the officers guarding his building to leave. Anon then approaches Sal's building. Sal prepares his gun, but his vision is suddenly hacked. He sees through another person's perspective, someone aiming a gun at him. Reacting instinctively, Sal attacks the individual, shooting them in the leg. Despite getting injured himself, Sal continues watching his assailant's point of view and realizes that Anon is behind the shooter. He pins her against the wall, and the mirror behind her reveals that the shooter is Cyrus. Cyrus has been acting as the anonymous proxy Anon used to conceal her identity. When the Bureau contacted him, Cyrus deliberately diverted the investigation away from her because he admires her work and wants to protect her. Cyrus promises to erase memories that Anon cannot delete and points his gun at Sal. But Sal manages to shoot him in the stomach without looking. Cyrus grabs Anon and tries to flee, but Sal catches up despite viewing the world through Cyrus's eyes. He shoots Cyrus once more, finally ending his life. Freed from the hacking, Sal watches Anon walk away. Kenick reprimands Charles for hiring Cyrus, but Charles claims it was the Bureau's recommendation. Kenick realizes that Cyrus manipulated the situation to make it appear as though the Bureau endorsed him. When Kenick orders Sal to search for Anon, Sal simply walks away. At their initial meeting spot, Anon approaches Sal and apologizes for using him as bait to lure Cyrus out. Anon discovered that Cyrus killed her clients because he didn't want anyone else to have her. She then reveals that she dispersed her life's recordings into random moments of other people's recordings to hide herself. Sal asks why she went to such lengths to conceal her identity, and Anon explains that she simply doesn't want to be seen. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share if you enjoyed the video. See you again here on The Recaps channel.